Hi everyone, here's another commonly asked system error log or error log interview question, which goes something like write the code for a deep flip flop in system error log. Okay, let's um, quickly jump to the next slide. Here uh, we have a deep flip flop with its ports. Um, D is your main input data port. We said is to reset the output to a known state at the start of the simulation or whenever required. Clock is clock. Q is the delayed output. Q bar is just the inverted version of Q. Um, so when an interviewer or someone asks you to write the code for G flip flop, here are a few questions or assumptions uh, to confirm with the interviewer. Edge trigger. So we know uh, a default valve is edge trigger. But is it positive edge trigger or negative edge trigger? Something to ask and confirm. Um, then the next question is the output of the default flop. flop. Um, or the default flop, is it synchronous to the reset or asynchronous to the reset? And another thing to ask about the reset is also whether it's active high or active low reset. And of course, you should remember to use non-blocking statement assignments. So all the right side of the expressions or statements are first calculated, and consequently, all the left hand side assignment takes place together. So here we first declare a module called deep flip flop. Next, um, we have the ports and their directions. Reset, clock, D, their inputs. And then you have your two output ports, um, uh, which we have declared here as logic type. So they can have four states. One, zero, X, and V. Alrighty. Next, you have, um, in system where log, we have um, a new construct, uh, which is always underscore FF for flip-flop. Uh, this is equivalent to where log always at, but it clarifies the designer's intent to the tool. So that, that's why we use always flip-flop. Add is followed by the sensitivity list. So you have, um, like I said, is it positive edge clock or negative edge clock? So that's something to determine. De depending on that, you're going to choose which edge you're going to use for the clock. Here we also have this um, reset in the sensitivity list. Um, and this is pause edge because um, we are expecting it to be an active high reset. So by adding the reset to the sensitivity list here, that means this is uh, the, uh, it's a synchronous reset flip-flop. So then we have our basic begin, a preset, then Q gets um, the output as zero, else uh, Q get the D as the output, uh, output. And in the end, we assign the inverse of Q to Q bar. Okay. So there are a few things, right? The interviewer could be like, okay, now can you tell me how to change the flip flop a little bit? Um, to change this uh, flip flop to tr uh, trigger on the negative edge, like we just discussed, you're just going to change this to negative edge clock. Um, so the transfer of input to the output will happen on the negative edge. To make it synchronous to the to make it a sync reset flip flop, we can remove the reset from the sensitivity list. And to make it active low, we're going to detect the negative edge of the reset bar, for instance. And then if we see the uh, reset bar going to zero, then we'll reset Q to zero. So those are the little uh, uh, things that someone could ask you to change around just so that they can understand what they you understand the uh, concept of edges, ASIC just resets, and active high and active low.
and of course end module uh, to complete the code. Ports, edge triggered, non blocking assignment, and um, reset. So here's the flip flop output waveform. Here we'll quickly go over the output of this code. In the following uh, waveform, we, um, in, so of course, we see clock, the input Q, Q bar, and reset. So at, at this marker, at the first marker, we see that the D is initially X. However, the output Q and Q bar are known values. The reason for that is the reset is high at this point. Um, and since this was an asynchronous reset flop, so the output is known at this point. And um, the next um, marker basically shows the positive edge of the clock. So at this point, uh, prior to this uh, clock edge, D is 1. So we see that being transferred onto the output here. And the third marker is essentially showing the D has gone to zero, gets registered over here at this, or gets detected at this edge, and then basically Q goes low. And Q bar at all times is the inverse, pretty much. All right. Um, that's all, folks. Uh, so see you guys in the next video. Uh, do let me know if you have any questions, comments. All right, thanks. See ya.